Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Mac with Emergency Reporting. I apologize for being a little late there, having some computer issues with all of this uh, stuff going around, but uh, on now, so I do apologize. Um, Greg, I see you're on also. Um, yes, I am, Mac. You want me to pitch it to you and you start them out? Whoa, I don't know if that's such a good idea today, but I can try. <laughs> okay, has um, Chris made it in yet? I was looking. I don't see him. And I think he was on duty today, so he was going to be a kind of a, a maybe he was going to be able to. No problem. And uh, I think mine had a lot to do with some storms we're getting in the scene, uh, in the area. So uh, That's what I was kind of figuring could be what's going on. So I do apologize, everyone. But uh, we'll see if we can't get you through here and go with today. We're doing uh, the vision set of emergency reporting. So we'll be talking within the occupancy module here. And let me see here. Are you sharing your screen now? Um, I don't mean to be. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, go ahead and share your screen and you can get started in it. There you go. All right, so now I need the presentation. What do we do with that? I don't have the presentation anywhere, Mac. Let me see. You can just go ahead and start into the, uh, you know, in emergency reporting. I don't think I see it right off. All right, Mac, can you see my screen now? Uh, let me see, it went away. Yes, I've got it. Okay. All right. Let's see, vision risk assessment. I, for, I actually forgot what the topic was today. Um, Under occupancy. Yes. All right, so, ooh, you know what, Mac? I am not uh, up on this at all. I apologize. Okay, let me grab it then. All right, everyone. Sorry about that. That's no problem. No problem. Yeah, we actually had another trainer that was going to be on today, but he had uh, some problems. So let's go through and uh, we'll sort of cover this. Shifting gears, just coming out of another training also. So when we go through our um, occupancies and we're talking about the vision program, okay? So within vision, there's a couple of things we'll talk about first, but actually on our occupancy grid page that we see, we can go to the map view. And then you're going to see these occupancies over here. If you have the vision, you're going to see the different color of the occupancies that you can have. And that's all rating those within the OVAP scoring. OK, so when we talk about OVAP score, it, it's essentially the same as what some of us probably heard years ago as a risk analysis 
on an occupancy or on a building has a lot to do with your um, ISO rating and stuff as far as your uh, fire prevention uh, that you're doing, your community risk analysis part of that. So that's sort of uh, setting that stage up for doing your risk analysis and, and your OVAP scores for your businesses to try to help your um, ISO for that area. So we're trying to get them as low as possible. Uh, and we'll sort of go over that portion of it now. But if we go in, I just wanted to show you this. So if we go into these, we can see uh, I've got a few of them uh, done in this area, I believe it is. Uh, it should have been right in here. You have to get down closer to them, but there's one that's done. It's green, so it's below 40. That's actually an Arby's. Um, that's um, is where that at where that's at in my test account. So if we go into an occupancy, we can do that from here. We go into this occupancy from here. We'll see that within the occupancy, we start going over, and I'm sure you're familiar with these. We've already went over those, uh, the different pages. But we start looking at hazards. Hazards is tied to the vision. So if we look in the hazards, this is that OVAP score we're looking at. Okay, so when we get into the OVAP scoring, it's got some details in here that we can get to or we can see some of it is brought over from uh, other places that you've already entered it into this occupancy. So it's brought over. So total number of employees, your square footage is brought over from the existing number of floors, your square footage here and your separation. Uh, you may have or may not have put that in. So you'll put that in. It's pretty easy you can either highlight it type it in or you can go up and down with the errors here then you have your property value and what that is meaning is what's the property value to your community okay uh, business loss minor casualty exposure here um, is what your what this particular one is you know so residential of course going to be different ones but this is sort of what this is going for some of these when you start getting in of course your life safety is is pretty easy to answer um it's pretty much is it there is it not and and pretty much an answer there when we get into some of these as far as our risk here okay um some of these are are pretty subjective you know as far as the answer there so we need to look at some things and we can actually go up here to the very top under the help section. So we click on help. Uh, it's actually this particular part's not working again. So we'll look into that, but we do have it in there. So if it's not here, this would be actually under the occupancy setting. So we can go to vision. And when we start talking about these things, you can see some more information about what the vision product does, how it's in there. We can uh, go in and actually look at the hazards tab, okay? So when we're looking at that hazard tab, okay, we can sort of see some what of the things they are talking about and describe them a little bit more in depth. So we're not being as uh, subjective to whoever's doing the the vision so i would encourage any of your inspectors that are doing this or your fire crews or whoever's doing the hazard analysis or doing that ovap scoring on the occupancy to read through this maybe some classes in there that they're really uh focusing in on so that you're getting the same uh scoring basically for each uh occupancy so that it's not inflated or deflated based on what they're picking here Okay, some of this is uh, undergoing some changes in our system to sort of uh, some new calculations or stuff that's doing there. So they're working on that behind the scenes. You really won't have to worry about it. It'll, it'll come to pass and uh, won't really change anything on the front end for us to see more on the back end. Uh, gives you these non-combustible, the fire load type stuff that we're talking about. So as you can see, some of these uh, questions that it's ask, asking you uh, within this occupancy down here, it really gets very subjective and you can use the um, help tab to really go through and see 
more of a description or more definition to what you're actually answering there. Okay. Hopefully that, that helps some as far as filling these out. So this one's filled out. Your available water flow, you can put in uh, there again, definition for that. If we go back, you can see your available water flow right down here. That's to indicate the available water flow for 100% of the fire involvement for the first floor only. And it's in a GPM. Uh, we need to put that in there. That's part of the calculation um, that's going to determine your OVAP score. Okay. And just to sort of look up and to sort of explain the OVAP score. We can look that up and just give you an overall. So it's a rating of your community risk assessments. Okay. Hey, hey Mac. Yes. Yeah, we got an attendee that raised their hand that sound looks like they're calling in by phone. So I'm just gonna see if I can. Okay, no question. Okay. Yeah, haven't been able to type in a question. I'm just gonna see if I can. Yeah, and we do have some handouts in there. Uh, you've got two that are in there, your ISO guide for determining uh, needed fire flow and then also the needed fire flow manual. Uh, you'll find that within the handout section of this um, webinar. Okay, so OVAP actually stands for Occupancy Vulnerability Assessment Profile, so OVAP. So there again, that sort of gives you some ideas. You can look through there and sort of see um, you know, a little bit more detail as to what we're looking for and why uh, it's important to the different, uh, you know, ISO or accreditation or anything like that. Okay. So then you'll get your results. There's also needed fire flow down here. Um, as you can see, this OVAP score was 29.7, and then it's going to be actually color coded there. Uh, we can change that by different marks we make. Some will affect it more than others. Uh, that's one reason we're going back through and sort of reweighing the weight as far as the formula as to what these different things mean uh, to sort of correct it and, or I say correct it, get it more in line with what we're doing or what's going on with it uh, within the uh, requirements of the NFPA and, and uh, ISO and stuff. Okay. Now, up at the top, you're going to see um, actually a vision section. So when you have vision up here, you're going to see vision. If we click on that, it's going to be occupancy hazard report. So we can run these results by uh, name, address, needed fire flow, or OVAP scoring. If we just generate the report, it's going to come up. And these are the ones that I have done. You can see if the if it's sufficient or insufficient flow available. You see this one really high, so it's not there. Uh, most of the others are there. You'll see how they come through. This is just an overall report of your vision here. Uh, it's actually pulling by name. Okay, if I go back to that uh, report here or in that area, I can look at hazard statistics also as another report that's given in here. So, and this is pretty much overall what I have done. It's gonna tell us above 60, uh, above 49, you know, what's in, the, where they are at. And then number of completed OVAP scores, there's six, so it's only 2% of my occupancies. I've been doing really poor in this particular um, test account, but that's what it's looking for. So you get these numbers based on what's been done, your percentages, okay, does that, help understand anybody got any questions so far because what we're going to do is I'm going to go into one of my occupancies here that doesn't have an OVAP score and we're going to sort of see how that's looking and what it looks like. Okay. I did not see any questions at this point Mac. Okay so I'm going to go into the Burger King here okay so I'll go over to edit this we're going to see that pretty much everything through here is done. So we're going to go straight to the hazards tab. Number of employees here, we're going to say that there's actually 
we can add them up, but we're going to say there's 18. Their average exposure separation in feet, this particular uh, business is off to itself in a sense. There's plenty of room around it, so we're going to say 100 feet. Okay. Now we've got number of floors. It's a single floor. Square footage is around 1,200. That come in from where we put it in up here on our pre-fire plans and stuff. Property value, we have nothing selected is what's mainly gonna be on everything when you first come in. We can say here again, business loss, we can put that in as far as our occupant load here. I believe this one's between 50 and 100 occupancies, if I'm just remembering correctly. Access, there's actually access to all sides of this building. Now, occupant mobility. Most everybody that goes to a fast food restaurant is usually awake, okay? Usually, all right? Then we've got some warning alarm systems that's in there. They do have an automatic central alarm in here. Their exits are conforming. It's a wood frame structure. We can drop that down and pick whichever one we want. And that is actually set within our occupancy module. Uh, in settings, you can have those added in there up here. So that'll be the drop down that you see here also. Okay. Then we get into some of those subjective things that we're looking for. So risk, regulatory oversight. So are they highly regu regulated, which means inspections are scheduled and carried out? If is it just random? Is it voluntary compliance? What are we doing with our uh, oversight here? So I would say highly regulated scheduled inspections and mandatory compliance. So we'll look at on the very top one. Human activity, okay? Is there no access to unauthorized personnel? You know, it's more of a business activity, sales and retail type stuff here. So we would put that one there and you can see the others. I'm not gonna read through all of them. Their experience. Now here again, experience. What experience are we looking for? If we go look at our uh, help guide here, and we look down that, we look at experience. Experience refers to the frequency of incidents at that particular occupancy. More frequency, more familiarity with the occupancy, and um, slightly less risk involved. So that's what it's looking for. Not how often we inspect it or how often you know, you're in it, but how many times do you get calls there and what type stuff are you doing there, okay? So if we look here, we don't get calls a lot there. So I would probably say rare occurrence, okay? Capacity to control within the building of origin. I would say, yeah, that's pretty much what we would have there. Got a question or something coming up? Nothing yet. Okay. All right, in the hazard index, there again, what is in here? So we can check over here our hazard index that we're talking about, the appropriate type of hazards present, okay? It is, you know, the hazards that are in there, is there anything extraordinary that's in this building that, you know, it's a problem, okay? Probably for us, I would say this is more of a mixed hazard. It's the business type because they've got oils and cleaners and stuff that, that are in the building mainly probably their main thing there would probably be some type of oil or cooking grease, something like that. Okay, their fire load, there again, non-combustible, limited, combustible, what is inside the building? What is, is carried on there? I would say, you know, combustible is, is probably a good choice for that particular, or this particular building, uh, just because of what, you know, uh, we know about restaurants there. Okay, and you can look at, uh, you know, as far as your fire load, uh, go to the NFPA 13 and sort of get, get some more information there to see what's there. Now, available water flow, there again, uh, we'll say, um, 
1250 here. Okay. Now, we got fire sprinklers in this building. It defaults to no. Yes, they do. So we'll say yes. And then to calculate this and to save it, we can go down here. You know it's already calculated, but to save it, we can push save. And then it will actually save this occupancy. You'll see this um, green bar coming up. You'll see it there. So then that will be saved in there. Now when we go back up to the top and we go look in our vision list, our report here, we'll see that Burger King is now on there. It's sufficient and it gives us a 2530 overall uh, OVAP score there. Hey Mac, we do have a question now. Yes. Regarding available water supply, uh, is that based upon the hydrants around the occupancy or? Okay, there again, we'll look here. It's based on your ability to provide, indicate the availability of water flow for 100%. In other words, if we do our calculation and 100% of that building's on fire for that first floor, how many gallons a minute does it take? And can we keep that going? And for how long? So your so available hydrants, your delivery method, sort of, you know, tank or shutter or shuttle, you know, I know that um, we have personally 1250 gallon minute pumps and we have hydrants in that area that I can provide that for enough time to meet that need for that um, needed fire flow for 100% involvement. Does that make sense guys or y'all? Yep, Lee says he's got it, thank you. Okay, awesome, okay. Okay, so that's where that's going to come up. If we go back to our occupancies page, I'll show you sort of how it links together. If we go back to map view, if I go down here and go into that area here, wrong area. There is where my Burger King is and I can go to satellites right there. So now see it is a green. We can play around with that one a little bit if we would like. So let's go back into it from here. That way we don't have to go back through everything. But if we go to hazards, we'll play around with some of these numbers and some of the things we put in here just to see what, what happens. Okay. The biggest thing or one of the big things that's going to change is here. Uh, you see it didn't go up much even if it wasn't sprinkled, okay? This can make it go up pretty good. If we've got um, rapid burning, some of these will change a little bit. We have daily events there, it changes some. So you can see it, it's changing some, some of this to me, uh, that's one of the things that they're trying to work on to make that, you know, sort of change it. Uh, a little bit more. One of the other th changes is unregulated. You see it went up some, it's moving it a little bit. Oh, where was the other one? Um, extraordinary effort's going to change it. There again, moved it up some more. One of the other changes up here is, of course, your uh, exposure. We'll take that down to 10 feet. See, we went up a little bit. So I think there's some in there that they're working on trying to adjust to try to make that a little bit more uh, close with the, and, and some of it has come from changes uh, within NFPA, they're working to try to correct and get better and get fixed. More accurate. This is another thing that will change it. So let's say modified fire restrictive. See, it went down a good bit then. And if we go even go up to the constructive is 
fire resistive, took it down even further. So that's where we're we're getting into those um, different types of construction. You see how it sort of affects things and comes, you know, comes into play. Okay. All right, any questions so far? Nothing new. Nothing new. All right. All right. The person that was raising their hand, did we take care of that one or you know anything extra? That was uh, the one that was actually asked the, the question. So I'm I'm hoping that oh, okay. the, the we ability got to ask the question solved the uh, problem. I understand. Okay. So do we have any questions? I know we've got about 18 or 19 people on right now. Any other questions or thoughts or something you're wanting to try to get out of it, uh, explain a little bit deeper or anything? I'm not seeing any new questions coming in, Mac. Okay. Uh, I think I just saw one. Was that one? Oh, yep. No one popped in. Uh, Randy Childress, is there any way to add the hazard number to multiple occupancies in one building? Uh, there's not a like. Uh, so I guess you're you're. If I'm gathering this right, and and. It, Tell me if I'm not. You're saying like you've got a master tenant type relationship and you're wanting to add that to uh, multiple businesses that are, that are sort of in that one occupancy. Is that correct? Yes. That's what he's okay. yep. Yeah. There's not a way. If we go back to this beginning here. And if I've got a master here, we can select prefills here. Okay, so if you notice, it's it doesn't feel that hazard tab. So there is no way to make those multiple at one time. So we, we have to do them individual per occupancy. And really, I mean, if we think about it, yeah, it's going to affect a little bit. I mean, you are adding the, the type construction. So some of that stuff will be filled out, but to add the actual number you know, that same OVAP score to everybody in that building, uh, no, there's not. It has to be by individual. That uh, question. Another question, uh, uh, Lee Turner would like a little bit better construction type discussion. Okay, construction type. Okay, when we go into construction types, those are set up with your inspection when you when you have um, like your inspector one, two, and three within the NFPA guidelines or whatever. Uh, well, it's NFPA, your certified instructor or inspector, excuse me. Uh, you get those, they're set up within the different code sets you may have, okay? So if you go to ISO or NFPA, the building codes and stuff, you're going to see that these codes, when you're looking at construction types right here, okay, there's different codes. Now, sometime or used to, they used to refer to them as a type one, two, three, four, and five, and all that stuff. Uh, they're still in there. If you want to set this with these, that's fine. But this is really what ISO defines them as is here, okay, and then we can set them, we want to make sure our construction types has that ISO definition because the fact of when we're looking at, um, and well, let me make this statement before I move off, but the reason we didn't put the type one, two, three, four, and five is I taught the uh, fire inspector classes for years for uh, Alabama Fire College, and one of the the biggest questions people miss because we just don't uh, cover it enough, I think, and we don't do it a lot, is the different types and which one it was, okay? So the reason we just went, just like our communications over the radios, we get away from 10 codes, we just go to plain text. 
that's sort of the same thing we're doing here. And also just to match up what the ISO definition is. So if I go in and add one, you see I've added one here, don't care. I can call it whatever I want to call it, okay? So I can go in and say, uh, edit, I can call it whatever, and then I can put whatever definition I want to it, okay? Now granted, this is in the occupancy settings, so this is something only certain people can get to, but I can make this, uh, I don't care, type one. Okay, in parentheses, I could put that in parentheses out here, and then so it really doesn't matter what I put up here, but really, then this would be a fire restrictive. Okay, uh, as far as its ISO definition. Okay, so I would save that, and then that would be its tie from now on. Where that's going to come into play is not only on our OVAP score, but also within our occupancies. If I go into an occupancy and I'll go back into the one that I had open earlier, which is the Burger King here. So if I go back into it on our occupancy on the information page, if you scroll down, you're going to see down here that we have construction type. This is that same drop down list, and I can pick, I don't care, and it would be type one. So, whatever I'm putting here is associated. If I take this out and there's nothing here, okay, and I'll save this on the page so that way it will show correctly. And then I go to back up top and I look under my pre fire plans. Okay, we have the building height the length, the width, so square footage is here, our number of floors, all that stuff factored in up here. When I go down this page now, I'm gonna go down and you see needed fire flow does not show. The reason being is it has to have that construction type, that ISO definition in the background in order to calculate. It's part of the calculation for needed fire flow, okay? So if I go back to the info page and I'll pick that type construction and I'm gonna put it wood frame because that's what it pretty much is. It's got some brick facade, but it's still wood frame. And I go save it, okay? And then I go back to the pre-fire plan page because I've added the information up here that's needed for the calculation which is mainly this, uh, but that number comes from all this stuff or all the other numbers that I'm putting in. Then when I go down here, it's actually there. Okay, and it takes into effect or into account these. In this, if I've already put it in, that's why that weighs so much on or weighs some on the OVAP score is because of your needed fire flow, your flame uh, spread, or just you know basic time you have with that occupancy to be able to do something. Does that help or answer that question? Sounds like you got the question answered there, Mac. Sounds good. Uh, there was also a question from Bob Spielberger. What report number will print these occupancies? I did just did a quick search. Uh, I did find 1302, and I'm not sure if that's what Bob's looking for, which prints the occupancy list with the OVAP score by zone. That's that's one of uh, about 12 different searches or eight different uh, reports that came up when I searched for vision. So yeah. you, you can look through, uh, like I said, the two that's probably the quickest is those two that are on the top uh, in the vision product here. These two, uh, you know, will give you some just statistics in there but as far as overall reports like i said we can go to reports here and we can do ovap or vision so there's with there's by score and then here's full list of our zone as you were talking about so we'll look at our full list with ovap 
and this is pretty much that one that we had before. Um, it's just get, you know your your full list of occupancies here, and then your OVAP scores over here on the on the other side. Is that is that one you would look for, or is there some others you can see here? Um, Bob says thanks, so I think we might have had his question answered. So okay. this is um, by there. category, so you'll see your categories here of what they are. So there's different ones you can sort of change into here. This can go occupancy name or category. Uh, there's a question from Randy Childress. Do you know the NFPA 13 table for fire load? I don't know it right off. Um, I, I don't. I don't have it right off. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Okay. And, and it's sort of what we're showing here. It, it's some of this, but I don't have the. I don't remember the table. So when you see in these here, this is sort of what it's talking about. In the help manual here, on the help side. Okay. Randy says, no problem, he'll keep looking. Okay, uh, that should be, uh let's see i don't know that we can uh we might can look it up let's try oh gosh what which part is he actually looking for i'm not sure what table are you are we referring to? Uh, he mentions the fire load table. Yeah, I can't remember the name or which one it is, to be honest with you. I would have to, I'd have to have my code book and I don't have it right now to really get to get deep into that one, I'm sorry. Our access to my NFPA codes. Huh. Randy, Randy says he's gonna be teaching a class on it next week. He just wanted to reference it, so <laughs> not a big deal. Yeah. Can you invite us to that class, Randy? <laughs> All right. Okay, any other questions coming through, Greg? I'm not seeing any new ones. Well, again, apologize for uh, the delay today and uh, hopefully we gained you some insight into the vision program. It does, um, we, we've sort of shown how to use it uh, as far as what you can do with it and stuff within, um, you know, ER is, I mean, there's just so many things, you know, you can get as far as the different, uh, uh, information you get out of it, it, it's huge on your, you know, ISO. It shows that you're trying, that you're utilizing uh, and using and trying to do the the uh, community risk assessment um, and, and community risk reduction, which plays, you know, uh, pretty big numbers on your ISO grading. Also for accreditation and stuff. Uh, you need those type or that type information that you're getting. So um, it's really a big benefit. Uh, it's really a, not a lot to it in ER, as you see. Um, it, it's just not that complicated once you get into it. I say the biggest complication that I've seen uh, a lot of it is this information that we're sharing here uh, in the help menu. Like I said, go to help, it, it should went straight to it, but it didn't So the health hazard tabs. But if you know, if you go to help, go to occupancy module, occupancy information, and then the hazard tab, and you'll be able to find this information here that's online for you.
or on our website, okay, to really get down to it. And just mainly get people on the same page that's doing it so your numbers are correct and accurate as far as your scoring of your, your occupancies. Okay, if there's no other questions or comments here, I guess we'll call this one a wrap. Um, hope everybody's enjoyed it. Not seeing any new questions there, Mac. Uh, Randy does sound like he's willing to deal, though. He's willing to let us come to that class as long as we're willing to come and do some inspections for him there in Kentucky. I, I understand. <laughs> um, maybe if we could work something out for the winter time, Randy. I, I'm loving summer up here in Michigan right now, but yeah, when it gets cold up here, I might be willing to come down. I hear you. Well, he, he's he's a little bit north of me, so my weather is probably a little, you know. Well, rainy right now, so. <laughs> yeah. You might want to come up to Kentucky now, huh, Mac? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get out of some of that sweltering heat. Absolutely. But, um, you know, if you need anything um, from any of us, I'll actually put my uh, email, or you can look me up online, uh, or on our website, mac at emergencyreporting.com, fairly easy. MAC at emergencyreporting.com. And then Greg is Greg dot Simmons at emergencyreporting.com. So uh, give us a call, give us a shout, uh, whatever you need to do there, reach out and we'll help you as much as we can, anytime we can. And um, like I was saying, I, I can't think of anything else. Um, seemed like I was gonna say something I forgot, but anyway, uh, let us know where we can help you and we'll definitely get on there and help you out any way we can, give you some extra um, training or something on it if we need to, okay? Well, all right, thanks everybody for attending. I will say uh, uh, sort of the slide we were gonna put up before basically covers uh, who's gonna be here, which I talked about as far as the training and stuff. Uh, we, we usually go to the, to the application for that, but we, also usually show some upcoming trainings well because of the COVID-19. Uh, right now we don't have any, all of our RTAs have been canceled for the rest of the year. We are working some to try to get some on-site training for customers started back. Uh, we do have sort of a backlog there, but we're working on trying to get that started back so we can get out and actually start um, training on-site with folks again. So uh, you got one coming up, Nicole Beard will probably be in touch with you. If you want one, uh, get with Nicole dot Beard, Beard. That's N I C H O L E dot B E A R D at emergencyreporting.com. Send her a message. We can try to uh, get you in the list there to get you some on site. She can send you a quote, get you some on site training at your department. So if there's no other questions, Greg, I guess I we'll call no this one a wrap. I see no new ones, Mac. All right. Well, everybody have a great day. Be safe, be safe out there. Take care of your communities, but take care of each other in your department. I appreciate it. Everyone be careful. Have a great day. Bye-bye.